So, Audrey, what happened yesterday? Woo, a lot of things. Um, we started by uh, having a session with Hannah, you know, the new chatbot under the Alliance website. And I think this drawing is fantastic in uh, showing how Hannah uh, can be helpful for practitioners to get access to resources for COVID-19. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, also highlighting that the fact that every time someone asks a question, Hannah learns something new. Uh, so it gets smarter as more people ask questions. What else? Uh, we started our big day around um, infectious disease outbreak and child protection and trying to bring everyone and start thinking about you know, how we could position ourselves as a sector when it comes to infectious disease outbreak. And we have been through a very interesting process, I guess, um, looking at the socio-ecological model, um, but as well bringing and discussing together the key challenges uh, we have faced uh, during this particular infectious outbreak uh, pandemic, which is COVID-19. One of the things that I find um, quite interesting yesterday was um, that people didn't limit their uh, discussion and, and share of their expertise to the COVID-19 only, but uh, we got some example from um, Ebola uh, response a few years ago as well, and we were able to kind of look at what we have kept from Ebola and using COVID-19 and vice versa. What did you think about your, your session, Hani? Yeah, I, I was in the group that was talking about the socioeconomic uh, impact. And of course it was very um, fortuitous because we are, we are just actually today releasing the, uh, the provisional uh, draft of the uh, policy paper we have developed on the linkages between social protection and child protection which is all about the socioeconomic impact of, of COVID-19. But the discussions were very interesting, some very interesting uh, examples from countries like Iraq and Ethiopia and Somalia were given. But I think everything at the end came back to this idea that we have to make sure that children remain at the center of decision-making uh, during the, the infectious disease outbreaks and, and, it, and the response to it. I agree, I agree, and it, it, it has come out quite strongly. Uh, and since they won, basically, so it's very interesting that really there is a, a desire to keep the child at the center of the response. Um, and so here you can see some of the, some of the uh, key challenges uh, when it came to uh, working in silo, for example. And, and again, this has been quite interesting to, um, to discuss because it came, it came out on day one, um, and it was again mentioned on day two, and really like, how can we work better and collaborate better with other sectors to ensure that, um, again, the child <laughs> remains at the center of the response, uh, but as well to prevent working in silos. And we have seen quite good examples yesterday about, you know, health and child protection coming together, um, especially around case management when parents were sick to ensure that children could remain uh, protected and looked after. Uh, we have seen as well good example of education and child protection coming together as well when schools shut down and children were out of school. Um, so that was quite interesting. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, multi-sectoral approach, which speaks to the need for a holistic approach to, to the needs of the population and, and children just keeps coming up. And it's something that we, we have been discussing since several years now. Um, it has been actually part of our, one of our strategic priorities from, from uh, our, the current strategic plan that is ending this year. Um, so I, I feel like we shouldn't go through all of these because people can, can look at them and, um, and many, of, many people were there themselves. Yeah. Um, and those that were not there can look at these and also watch some of the live streams that are now on Facebook 
And we will also, we have recorded, I, I believe all of the sessions and we will be making sure that they're available on, on, the, on our YouTube channel as soon as we get a chance to edit them. Um, so yeah, I think maybe we should give a sense to, to our members and those that are hoping to join today, or maybe even those that don't want to join, but when they hear this, they will be interested to join, of what is going to happen today. No, th this, is, this is right, honey. And actually, you started already to make a kind of transition to what is going to happen today with uh, the mention of the strategic plan and the priority around integrated programming, because today will be the day where we will look at our strategic process uh, for the next three years. Um, and I can't believe that already 2017 in Kampala, we were working on the current work plan and now we are already moving forward and looking at the next cycle. Um, so today it's going to be for me quite interesting because obviously we will take the time to reflect a little bit on the current work plan. Uh, but as well, we are very much looking forward to continue those group work uh, with colleagues from the field from different countries or reasons and and expertise to be able to move forward and look at where we want to go for the next three years. Yeah, um, yeah, it will be a fascinating discussion and it will be a challenge because I think there's so much that everyone wants to talk about. And yesterday was, a, was an example of that. Group works re worked really well yesterday. Every single group work that I was in, everyone was contributing um, and we always ran out of time. Uh, which means basically people have a lot to share. Um, but now I think the difference between yesterday and today will be that yesterday was very much focused on infectious disease outbreaks. But now we're thinking about kind of more longer longer term. Of course, we don't know how, co how long COVID is going to last um, as a crisis, but hopefully not three years, <laughs> because that's the cycle that we have uh, for our strategic plan. So kind of thinking about both issues related to, to infectious disease outbreaks, but also outside of that. What are the priorities for the sector that the Alliance needs to take forward um, and, and act on? Um, and hopefully some really actionable uh, priorities will come out, but this will be the beginning of the process for us. Um, because of COVID-19, we have postponed a little bit the process of development, de development of our strategic plan this year so we will take all of the information that they're giving us and there will be a few more rounds of consultations in the next few months. And hopefully by early next year, we will have the priorities completely shaped up and, and we will start developing the actual strategic plan out of it, which also links with our work plan as, as you were suggesting. Um, yeah, so hope I hope a, a lot of uh, our members join and and contribute to this because this will impact the sector as a whole. No, I, I totally agree with you, Hani, and I think today it's going to be a very um, interesting and exciting moment. Uh, as you said, it's, it's the beginning of the process for that strategic plan uh, to be developed, and, uh, and this is the, the initial uh, consultation that we are going to do, so really hoping that people will be able to zoom out a little bit and look at um, where the sector is, is going to go uh, for the next three years. So I'd like to echo your words and say, yeah, I hope as well that a lot of members <laughs> will be joining us today for this uh, very uh, interesting discussion. Great. So now let's go get ready for the actual event, which is going to start in about an hour and a half. Super. So okay. see you very soon. Yeah, see you there. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.